Hello everyone, Chris here, and today I just wanted to give you some tips on how to improve your killer gameplay. And I think these tips could be useful for those who have been thinking of playing killer, but thinks it's a bit scary to do so. For those who are somewhat new to playing killer, as well as for the experienced killers who needs a little reminder of the basics. Now, I'm not saying I'm the best killer in the world. The only reason I felt like sharing some tips is because I do have a more relaxed mindset when it comes to playing killer, which I feel helps me a lot in this game. I've only played Dead by Daylight for about 10 months now, so I still remember how I felt when I first started playing killer. And I'll be honest, it can feel a bit scary to play this role in this game, as you might experience a lot more pressure, as you constantly need to make split second decisions, always be on the move, and at the end of the day, you are only reliant on your own skills. A little disclaimer before we get into the video, I absolutely don't expect everyone to have the same mindset as me, as I know for a fact that many people don't share my opinions on this matter. I am a firm believer that the killer is the one that dictates the tone of the game, therefore I do play this game in a way to make sure that everyone is enjoying the game. Some of these tips might reflect that mindset, and I am open for some of you to disagree with me. Feel free to share your opinions in the comments, as I am always curious to hear your viewpoints. But with that said, let's get into the video. Number 1. Survivors have two objectives in the game, repairing gens and escape. Any survivor who isn't doing a gen isn't really a threat to you and quite often it would benefit you just ignoring them. Sometimes a survivor might just be running around looking for a gen, but other times they are actively trying to distract you. Depending on the situation itself, consider ignoring a survivor who is trying to bait your attention in the open. This is as basic as it gets, but it's still something that's easy to forget when you have been playing for a while. And this kind of leads us directly into tip number 2. Identifying the weaker links. If there is one survivor in the group that is godlike at looping, you would be best to just ignore that survivor instead of spending lots of time chasing them. I'll be honest with you, in some games where it has been quite clear that one of the survivors are just insanely good at looping, I completely ignore them during the entire match, and rather catch them in the endgame if it comes to that. I actually had a perfect example of this yesterday, which I just had to include in this video, as it combined tip number 1 and tip number 2 and showcased exactly what I mean. I was playing Sadako, who I'm not really that confident with, and I was up against a prestige 100 Claudette with full legacy gear and a flashlight at Macmillan's, which was also a map offering from the survivor side. The Claudette instantly teabagged me from the very beginning, which made it very clear that she wants me to chase her. When someone teabags you from the very beginning of a match, it's most likely that they want your attention and for you to chase them. It doesn't necessarily mean they are being rude or toxic, at least that's my view on it. So I had a prestige 100 legacy Claudette who wanted me to chase her. Now why in the almighty heavens would I ever do that? I'm pretty sure if I did that I would have lost the game, so I did the opposite. I ignored her for the entire game which practically made this game into a 3 vs 1 as the Claudette didn't really contribute to the team's objectives. So I kept chasing the 3 other survivors who I identified to be the weaker links and I eventually got them all out of the game leaving me with just Claudette. Seeing as I got the hatch and I found her during the endgame collapse there was nothing she could do, either I get her or the entity gets her. So it ended up being a 4k and in my opinion it turned out this way because I ignored the obvious strong survivor during the entire match, just focusing on the other three instead. But to make things short, be aware of how much time you waste chasing a survivor, it might not be worth it. I do see a lot of killers getting triggered by skilled survivors to the point where you face camp them when you finally catch them, and my tip is, <laughs> just don't do that. If you spend 2 minutes chasing the same survivor before you caught them, that's your own fault. Overcommitting to a chase is a common killer mistake. Sometimes spreading pressure is a lot more important than keep chasing that one survivor for a longer duration. And the best part is that if the survivor knows they are good at looping, they will try to bait your attention. And as I said in tip number 1, that is one less survivor doing a gen. So <laughs> it's basically a win-win. Tip number 3. Locating the hooks. Now again, this is as basic as it gets, 
but I remember this to be my biggest fear when I started playing Killer, that I wouldn't find any hooks when I picked up a survivor, and even to this day I still manage to pick up survivors and completely ignore a hook that is right beside me, because I didn't see it before I picked the survivor up. I do recommend taking just a quick look around before you pick up a survivor to identify if there are any hooks nearby. This is especially important if the survivor has boilover, which hides the auras of nearby hooks, making it harder to spot them. The tip is basically have an overview of your surroundings before picking up a survivor. Number 4. And this is also as basic as it gets. Moonwalking. Whenever you are chasing a survivor around a loop, your red stain is your biggest weakness. And this is also how you will mind game a survivor. It's very easy for the survivor to see you coming when they see your red stain. And that's why it's often wise to moonwalk around loops to hopefully catch the survivors off guard. Just remember that the survivors have a different camera angle than you, so if you are playing a tall killer, the survivors might still see you over medium sized structures. Number 5. Don't get triggered. Yes, there are players out there who will actively try to trigger you. Either it's the typical teabagging, the flashlight clicking, which kind of isn't a thing anymore, or pointing at you after you're missing a wall swing. Just don't fall for it. The only thing you will achieve by getting triggered is doing lots and lots of mistakes. The best thing you could do, especially if it's clear the survivor is doing it to get your attention is, as I mentioned before, just ignore them. Sometimes not getting triggered, ignoring the survivor will make the survivor just waste a lot of time trying to taunt you instead of doing objectives. So again, it's a win-win situation for you. And this leads us into tip number 6, handling bully squads. Now, bully squads is a term used towards a group of survivors whose primary goal in a match is to mess with the killer instead of doing gens as fast as possible. This is often used with perks like head-on, the use of flashlights and flashbangs, or perks like boilover and saboteur. Now, this is just my opinion and you don't have to agree, but the only way of getting bullied in Dead by Daylight is if you allow yourself to be bullied. If you identify a bully squad, personally, I feel it's very easy to play around that. Because, well, first of all, all bully squads are the same. They all use one or more of the perks I just mentioned. So if a survivor goes down under a pallet, you just have to ignore them. You know there are survivors around with flashlights waiting for you, so why would you pick up the survivor? Just leave them on the ground. Did someone run somewhere they know they can't be hooked with, for example, boilover? Then again, just leave them on the ground. I'm not promoting slugging as a playstyle, but slugging is often the counter to these squads. But that doesn't mean you need to leave all the survivors slugged on the floor and let them bleed out, but you do what you have to do to make sure you can safely pick up a survivor and hook them, then rinse and repeat. I myself like meeting bullet squads because I don't let myself get bullied and it's a nice change of pace from the stale usual gameplay. The bullet squads often end up doing so many silly mistakes, and in most cases, I do win the game. So, in short terms, bullet squads are more than often easy to play around as long as you don't get triggered and identify their way of playing. If that means you have to play a bit mean with some slugging involved, then that is absolutely okay in my opinion. Also, a bonus tip, if you identify there are 3 survivors trying to bully you constantly, that means that the team also has a gen jockey whose role in the game is to do the gens while the rest of the survivors try to bullet you as the killer. If that is the case, then go for that survivor. Number 7. It's okay to not win all the time. In fact, you are not supposed to win every match in this game. If you do lose a match, then take a step back, take a deep breath and rather focus on what you could have done better. If anything, acknowledge that they were better than you. You will never achieve anything by blaming anyone else but yourself. As a little digression, whenever I meet survivors who I perceive as being really good survivors, I make sure to compliment them in the endgame chat. I don't expect everyone to do this, but why not tell someone that they are good and give them a well-deserved compliment? I've had games where survivors have complicated me as the killer and I'll be honest, it feels good and appreciated. Number 8. Remember to have fun. Playing Dead by Daylight can make you frustrated, tired, annoyed, angry and burned out. But it can also make you laugh, have fun, meet wholesome people and have a really good time. And you can decide for yourself how you want this game to be. If you only play this game to win, go with the same build all the time, play the same killer all the time, or take the game too seriously, I can with certainty say you will get burned out at some point. 
To prevent that, remember to make room for some fun. I can only speak for myself, but as I am someone who plays this game primarily to enjoy myself, have fun, and of course entertain other people, I almost never run into any toxicity in this game. On the other hand, I've had so many fun moments with other players wholesome endgame chats and survivor encounters. How you play the game is absolutely up to you and uh, that's why I say you can for the most part decide for yourself how this gameplay experience will be. And there you have it. These tips weren't necessarily specific for killers or revolve around game mechanics but rather the mentality of playing as a killer in this game and how to keep a positive and healthy mindset towards both yourself and towards other players. So with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheerio!